If you've ever bought or sold a home, you're most likely familiar with the term deposit money. Also known as earnest money, the deposit is money paid by the buyer at the time of the signing of the real estate contract. The deposit ensures the seller is protected from the buyer walking away, incentivizing the buyer to proceed to closing, where the title to the property is transferred and the remaining money is paid to the seller. In the case of most contracts, if there is a breach, we look to award expectation damages. This means that we seek to award damages to the aggrieved party that would put him or her in the position that he or she would have been had the contract been successfully performed. However, this is not generally practical in real property contract cases. If the seller breaches contract by refusing to close, monetary damages are not considered adequate because each parcel of real property is considered unique due to its location, the buyer can only truly receive the benefit of his bargain if the buyer is actually awarded the property. Therefore, in cases in which the seller breaches a valid real property sales agreement, courts will force the seller to go through with the sale called for by the agreement. This remedy is known as specific performance. On the other hand, when the buyer breaches contract, the expectation remedy is also often impractical because it is very difficult to determine with any precision the amount that a seller loses when a deal falls through. Remember, expectation remedies require a reasonable certainty before they can be awarded. To overcome this problem, many real property contracts include a liquidated damages clause stipulating that the purchaser gives a certain percentage of the sales price as earnest money at the time of the signing of the agreement. If the buyer then breaches the agreement, the seller is entitled to keep the deposit as damages for the breach. These clauses are generally considered valid as long as the situation is such that actual expectation damages are difficult to measure and if the amount of liquidated damages called for is a reasonable approximation of the seller's actual damages. A typical real property contract provision that establishes the earnest money as liquidated damages specifies that these two conditions are met. The earnest money is held by an escrow agent agreed to by the buyer and seller. In many cases, this is the seller's attorney, the real estate agent, or an agent of the title company but it can also be an unrelated third party. In the event of a breach, the escrow agent turns the money over to the seller. In the event that there is a dispute as to whether there was a breach, the escrow agent may hold the money pending the resolution of the dispute, or the escrow agent may bring an interpleader action in an appropriate court to get a judgment as to whom is entitled to the escrow funds. It would be unwise for the escrow agent to distribute monies to one party when there is a dispute, lest the other party sue the escrow agent for wrongful distribution of those monies. There is no hard and fast rule as to setting a fixed amount of deposit money when a real estate contract is negotiated. Obviously, the seller wants more money to be put down, and the purchaser wants to put less money down. The National Association of Realtors tells buyers to expect to put down between 1% and 3% of the purchase price as earnest money. Of course, depending on the custom of the region and the type of real estate transaction involved, some deals can require a deposit percentage more in the range of 10%. So how does the buyer protect him or herself from the possibility of losing the deposit money if something does go wrong? The answer is that real estate contracts often contain contingencies that allow the purchaser to back out of the agreement and get his or her earnest money back upon the occurrence of some event or condition. Though a contingency clause can be based on almost anything, we will briefly discuss two of the most important types of contingency clauses. A mortgage contingency clause is a virtual necessity when the purchaser is planning to seek financing to purchase the real estate at issue. Although prospective home buyers can get pre-approvals for mortgages, banks will not usually issue a final approval for a mortgage loan without a signed contract. To protect the purchaser in case the deal falls through, Purchasers will typically seek a provision that states that the purchaser may back out and obtain a refund of the deposit if the purchaser applies in good faith for a mortgage, but is ultimately denied. Due to the added layer of uncertainty inherent in a contract with mortgage contingency clauses, sellers usually prefer purchasers who are willing to engage in a cash transaction.
which is synonymous with there being no mortgage contingency clause. Many sellers will even take a slightly lower priced offer to avoid a mortgage contingency clause given the choice. An inspection clause allows the purchaser a certain period of time after the signing of the contract to conduct a home inspection by a home inspector or engineer. A typical inspection clause gives the purchaser the right to renegotiate or back out if there are found to be problems with the house. Since the vast majority of residential homes have some minor or major problems or needed repairs, an inspection clause of this type, as a practical matter, allows the purchaser to back out of or renegotiate the agreement after the contract is signed. Therefore, this is a provision that is very friendly to the purchaser and potentially very harmful to the seller. Many sellers, therefore, insist that home inspection and any subsequent negotiation occur prior to the signing of the agreement and that the agreement not contain an inspection clause. If the contract falls through based on something that is the seller's fault, it goes without saying that the deposit must be returned to the buyer. The buyer may also be able to successfully sue for further damages in such a case. When used properly, Earnest money protects the seller by giving the buyer a strong incentive to go through with the deal. It also helps the buyer by inducing the seller to take the house off the market by signing the contract and helps both parties gain cost certainty in the transaction rather than leave complex damages computations for later determination by a judge or jury. However, it is also very important that both parties to the transaction understand the role of the earnest money how it protects them, and how and when it does not protect them. As always, questions regarding a particular case or transaction should be discussed with a local attorney familiar with this area of law.